See what I'm doing with my hands? Stop it. A strong grip is one of the most detrimental things you can do to your golf swing. Quite shocking, I know, because everyone thinks that a stronger grip equates to more power, more distance, better strikes, and it's what the pros do. Well, I'm here to tell you, not as many pros do it as you think, and having a strong grip is actually going to rob you of distance, and it's one of the most detrimental things you can do for power. It's also gonna cause injuries to your wrist, things like tendonitis. And if you struggle with a slice, you might be looking in all the wrong places when in actual fact, your grip is causing you to slice the ball into the trees. A strong wrist is also gonna cause flipping, which is really gonna affect your ball striking consistency. It's also gonna reduce the height that you hit the shots, which is gonna rob you of distance. That is just to name a few things of how a strong grip is detrimental to your golf swing. The impression that a strong grip is going to deliver more power and for one thing counteract a slice does come from a relative form of truth that a lot of times to begin with when we strengthen our grip it promotes a release pattern which helps us sort of square up that face a little bit easier so you think fantastic but it doesn't last long and i'm going to show you in a few minutes why and when you finally understand it you'll go oh my gosh that's why i've been struggling for so long and the other thing is, if it doesn't work, why do so many pros do it? Why do a lot of pros have a stronger lead hand grip than they do, the, you know, than weaker or neutral? Two factors to this. One, it's not always the lead hand that we need to be looking at. It's also the trail hand. The strength, meaning that the rotation orientation is going to be strong. Being underneath here, you think it's going to help you release, but it doesn't. But the pros that do it, do have a stronger grip, lead or trail, they're very athletic. They are supreme golf athletes, the majority of them anyway, or they're compensating for something in their anatomy or a big tendency that they do. The thing is, it has to coincide with a very specific move to avoid slicing, to avoid losing distance, to all those bad things that we covered. And this will help you understand it. If I take a strong grip, under here, right? And I make my backswing and I'm trying to just deliver without too much manipulation. That club face is way open here. My almost face is pointing up to the sky. So then it thinks, well, I can just release, right? I'm gonna release those hands because my hands are stronger. But what tends to happen is that can happen, but we stall the body because we have to really work exceptionally hard just to move those hands to bring them back to square. And when we do that, the ball gets hooked left or we're just not getting a very good strike. The pros don't do that, or like the good ones. So what do they do? Well, they've got the strong grip, but as they get to here, they are able to rotate exceptionally fast, dynamically, so they can deliver the club with that shaft lean, as people always talk about, with that club being square. If they don't, rotate, 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 and clear out the way, that club face will always be pointing out to the right, always. And we realize that a lot of the times because we're not supreme athletes like a lot of the guys doing it. So the body stalls, the hands take over, and they cause a flip or that tendonitis, that pain that we had there, which causes so much bad stuff, it's ridiculous. Or we create that hook, or we hold on to that angle and we just sort of end up sort of shoving it out to the right that way and getting that slice. And then we start trying to counterbalance it all the time because we're over the top, over the top. We're here and we're always trying to manipulate and we think there's something wrong with our swing, but it's not the swing. It stems from your grip because your body, your wrists, your arms, your whole body responds to how you set up subconsciously and consciously. So we need to get it more neutral. And I'm gonna show you how natural it is. And I know it's gonna make sense. I touched on it earlier, but it's actually the trail arm has more influence over the golf swing than the lead arm. Most people think it's the other way around, especially when it comes to club face control. However, the trail arm is our big connector, if you will, to the biggest muscles when it comes to delivering a golf swing is the chest and the triceps. If we have a strong grip, we are unable to engage the stretch out that chest and stretch out that tricep. We're not able to create that leverage. So we end up getting stuck. 
and we cannot rotate quick enough or we end up just leaving it open. So we need to look at it a little bit differently. And this is what I mean. Grab a club for me, because I want you to try this. You can hold the club in your left arm like you normally would. I don't really care how you hold it for now. And I want you to place your right hand how you normally would, okay? If you're just bringing it onto the side, you're trying to end up on the side a little bit here, okay? It's been talked about a lot, but having the V that we're forming in the trail hand pointing up approximately to the shoulder, we're not gonna pay any attention to that, but we'll get to that in a minute. If I held the club in the standard stronger than neutral grip, okay, just with my trail hand, that's where it would be naturally. That's my setup. If I just do a punch, which is, I mean, I'm not trying to be angry, but if I just bring my arm in and punch it back out, my arm naturally rotates that way. That is a natural movement there. We don't punch like that so much. If I just punch naturally, my arm rotates here. If I do that from a stronger position with the trail hand, my face is square there, and I'm going to bring it back and punch. And what happens is, if I do that all the time, to not let it close, I'm having to hold on to it. I'm having to manipulate and hold on or rotate to keep that face relatively square. If I'm doing this natural movement, it's always going to shut. So we need to try and get the hand a little bit more on top. So at least the V is to the center of the chest or ideally more towards the lead shoulder where we're kind of getting a bit more of a, an angle from the lead arm all the way down. But don't worry too much about that. We're just trying to feel a little bit more on top. Now, we don't want it to be on top that way. We're not cheating. We've still got some internal rotation here. We're still bringing the arm in. We're punching down that way, but I'm setting up to a more neutral, weaker position with this trail hand, okay? So when I bring it in, when I punch, it's going to go straight. When I punch, it's going to go straight. If it's strong, it's gonna hook around. See that? So there's no manipulation. So if we set up with a more neutral position, there is going to be much less compensation and much less manipulation to bring that club back to square. The other benefit I talked about is hitting the ball higher, not just more speed, but getting more height. When we've got the shut and strong you know, placement, we're having to really work hard to square up that club face, which is de-lofting it a lot. The pros can do it, fast swings can do it, but when you've got a slower swing speed, too much shuffling is gonna rob you of a lot of yards. We almost want the feeling of adding loft, okay? When we add loft, we're gonna get more height and more distance with less effort. And a weaker grip is going to allow you to deliver more speed and power without getting in your own way. You can grab a hammer if you want, but you don't have to. But I want you to at least grab a golf club and I want you to hold it like you would a hammer if you were going to hammer something straight up and down. Same with the left hand. I want you to hammer something straight up and down. And your orientation is to be as neutral as possible is how we want to hold the golf club as well, just like you would a hammer. You wouldn't hammer holding it like, I'm exaggerating, but you wouldn't hammer like this. It's very hard to move up and down that way because we're in our own way. We're putting stress on the joints. We're having to manipulate. So having a weaker grip is more neutral. Neutral's a good thing 99% of the time. But I'm going to feel this movement. It's as easy as that. So when I take my setup, I want to try and calibrate myself with that hammer feeling here, okay? There's my hammer feeling, there's my setup, and my grip now is much more neutral. The back of my hand is facing more over to there. I'm more on top with the trail hand, but it means that I don't have to manipulate anywhere near as much to get that ball, to get that club face rather, back to square. It's unbelievably simple. And the thing is, you don't have to work as hard or anywhere near as hard as you have been when you have a neutral grip. This comes with a warning and you need to know what to do when it happens, because it will happen. If you've been using a strong grip for a while and you do take this advice to give it a try to make it more neutral, you will, at first, probably start hitting the ball right because you've been having to work exceptionally hard either with just too much arms to square that club face back up, but you don't have to do that as much now. It's gonna be here. But if you're still trying to rotate, 
you're going to actually hit it left if you're just using your arms. Likewise, if you have a strong grip and you're hitting it straight most of the time, it likely means that when you go neutral, you'll start to be hitting it right. What do you do if you take my advice and have a more neutral grip? It's going to create less compensations, but just to nudge you in the right direction, we need to make sure that you do this. We want to have the feeling of swinging more out to in that way with the neutral grip. So it's not about manipulation, but we're going to try and encourage ourselves to have a better sequence and a better path. So what you can do is actually split stunts your feet just a little bit here. So move the trail foot forward and the lead foot just back a few inches. Okay, what that's going to do, you might think that's going to make you go this way, but because you think it's going to make you go this way, it's actually going to make you go a bit more into out, all right? Just in this specific drill anyway. Yes, you can move it that way, which can do it, but I wanted to give you a different alternative. When you swing a bit more into out with a neutral grip and a neutral club face, you really don't have anywhere near as much force manipulation or release pattern that you need to do. It's that much easier. So go and give the neutral grip a try. Use those checkpoints. Make sure that you're holding it in your fingers more, that the back of the hand on the lead hand is facing the target more and you're more on top with the trail hand. Get your path into out and I promise you, your swing will deliver the results you're after. Now, if you want to really add a bit more power, again, without too much manipulation and use your body correctly, this is the one you want. I'll see you next time.